the beginnings of life. As everybody knows to nowadays, the knowledge we possess of life before the beginnings of human memory and tradition is derived from the markings and fossils of living things in the stratified rocks. We find preserved in shale and slate, limestone and sandstone, bones, shells, fibers, stems, fruits, footmarks, scratchings, and the like, side by side with the ripple marks of the earliest tides and the pittings of the earliest rainfalls. It is by the sedulous examination of this record of the rocks that the past history of the earth's life has been pieced together. That much nearly everybody knows today. The sedimentary rocks do not lie neatly, stratum above stratum. They have been crumpled, bent, thrust about, distorted and mixed together, like the leaves of a library that has been repeatedly looted and burned and it is only as a result of many devoted lifetimes of work that the record has been put into order and read. The whole compass of time represented by the record of the rocks is now estimated as one billion and six hundred million years. The earliest rocks in the record are called by geologists the Azoic rocks, because they show no traces of life. Great areas of these Azoic rocks lie uncovered in North America, and they are of such a thickness that geologists consider that they represent a period of at least half of the one billion and six hundred millions which they assign to the whole geological record. Let me repeat this profoundly significant fact. Half the great interval of time since land and sea were first distinguishable on earth has left us no traces of life. There are rifflings and rain marks still to be found in these rocks, but no marks nor vestiges of any living thing. Then, as we come up the record, signs of past life appear and increase. The age of the world's history in which we find these past traces is called by geologists the Lower Paleozoic Age. The first indications that life was astir are vestiges of comparatively simple and lowly things, the shells of small shellfish, the stems and flower-like heads of zoophytes, seaweeds, and the tracks and remains of sea worms and crustacea. Very early appear certain creatures rather like plant lice, crawling creatures, which could roll themselves up into balls as the plant lice do, the trilobites. Later, by a few million years or so, come certain sea scorpions, more mobile and powerful creatures than the world had ever seen before. None of these creatures were of very great size. Among the largest were certain of the sea scorpions, which measured nine feet in length. There are no signs whatever of land life of any sort, plant or animal. There are no fishes, nor any vertebrated creatures in this part of the record. Essentially, all the plants and creatures, which have left us their traces from this period of the Earth's history, are shallow water and intertidal beings. If we wish to parallel the flora and fauna of the lower Paleozoic rocks on the earth today, we should do it best, except in the matter of size, by taking a drop of water from a rock pool or scummy ditch and examining it under a microscope. The little crustacea, the small shellfish, the zoophytes and algae we should find there would display a quite striking resemblance to these clumsier, larger prototypes that once were the crown of life upon our planet. It is well, however, to bear in mind that the lower Paleozoic rocks probably do not give us anything at all representative of the first beginnings of life on our planet. Unless a creature has bones or other hard parts, unless it wears a shell or is big enough and heavy enough to make characteristic footprints and trails in mud, it is unlikely to leave any fossilized traces of its existence behind. Today there are hundreds of thousands of species of small, soft-bodied creatures in our world which it is inconceivable can ever leave any mark for future geologists to discover. In the world's past, millions and millions of species of such creatures may have lived and multiplied and flourished and passed away without a trace remaining. The waters of the warm and shallow lakes and seas of the so-called Azoic period 
may have teemed with an infinite variety of lowly, jelly-like, shell-less and boneless creatures, and a multitude of green scummy plants may have spread over the sunlit intertidal rocks and beaches. The record of the rocks is no more a complete record of life in the past than the books of a bank are a record of the existence of everybody in the neighborhood. It is only when a species begins to secrete a shell or a spicula or a carapace or a lime-supported stem and so put by something for the future that it goes upon the record. But in rocks of an age prior to those which bear any fossil traces, graphite, a form of uncombined carbon, is sometimes found and some authorities consider that it may have been separated out from combination through the vital activities of unknown living things.